Because I think you should anyway. Okay, there you go. Perfect. Don't know why that took so long. Welcome back, everybody, to episode 14 of Cloin United. Uh, very excited to be here again today. Obviously, we're a little bit later because the Champions League semi-finals were on uh, in real life. If I sound like I'm a bit shivery, it's because it's fucking freezing in this room at the moment. I just had to throw on my jumper. Bloody hell. Uh, first world problems, eh? It is a very, very cold room that I am in right now. But uh, yeah, hopefully I'll start warming up in a bit. But as you can see here, two huge games we have to start out this episode. Man City, who just played Real Madrid in the Champions League semi-final. First leg, will be taking on them in a top-of-the-table clash. If we win this game, we will go top of the table, which is insane. And then Liverpool away straight after that. Arsenal at home then, so the games just keep coming thick and fast. We'll be able to sim this Conference League game against Sandefjord because we have already won the group there. So we're in the last 16 of the Conference League, which is good. And then we'll probably maybe play this Brighton game as well and possibly leave it with Chelsea. I think that sounds like a plan. So some big games coming up in today's episode. I am quite excited for it. Last time out, we had uh, a good old time, apart from the first game, which we lost to West Ham, which was probably one of the most boring games I think I've ever played on YouTube. So I do apologize for that. Uh, we then followed it up with a 4-0 win over Zurich, which actually sealed our route into the last 16 of the Conference League. Then we followed that up with a 3-2 win against Tottenham and finished off with a 3-1 win over Norwich in the league. Back-to-back hat-tricks there with JJ. Uh, and then we also finished up the uh, episode with a 4-1 win in the Conference League against Union, which means we still have a 100% record in that competition this season, which is great. And as I say, we are in the knockout rounds. So, without further ado, let's just get into today's games. We'll do a little okay, press conference everyone. first. We'll, start with the now, please. we'll Thank give you. it our best. The fact that we're in this position at this stage of the season is quite... I think the team and the squad is progressing nicely as well. If we just have a quick look at it there. I mean, look at that. That is a very good team. And that is a team that, yeah, should be having a go at, at the title and should be competing to get into the top four. Um, and I think it's a team that should definitely be winning the Conference League. And that's our reserves then to back it up so i'm very happy with the team we've made so far and uh yeah let's see if we can go top of the league against man city uh just to give you a quick look at the league table before we get into it aston villa still unbeaten but they've drawn a lot of games which means they are two points behind us as are chelsea uh, in fourth west ham only four points behind us in fifth and city one point above us uh, at the top of the table but that could all change today with a win against the second biggest team in Manchester. And yes, I have just said that to rile up a few cities. Well, I know I do genuinely believe that. But uh, I didn't say second best team. I said second biggest. Of course, City currently would be the top team in the city. Unfortunately, top squad, I should say. But uh, I do still believe, well, not just believe, everyone knows that it's a fact that Manchester United are a bigger club than Manchester City. And if you don't like that, well, then get over it. But anyways, hopefully Cloyne and United can be a better team today. Let's see how we do here against the Citizens. Let's have a quick look at their starting lineup. So they are playing Ederson in goal, Lucas Vazquez, Diaz, Akanji, and Gomez at the back. Interesting. Rodri as a holding midfielder with Bernardo Silva and De Bruyne in front of him. Mara's on the right, Foden on the left, Erling Haaland up front. Not going to be an easy feat today. We did beat City at the Etihad last season, but they did whack us 6-0 here. Or was it 6-1? It was either 6-1 or 6-0, I can't really remember. But either way, it was a pasting. I was tempted to play in Buemo on this, but I will give Ferreira the start. Oh, and... Mamardashvili has to make a save straight away. The man who has played every game so far this season. He started and finished every game so far this season, I should say. Phil Foden. Oh, he's done well there. God, Man City are such a difficult team to come up against here. But we ain't exactly an easy team to come up against either. Alex with a lovely run there. Oh, this is beautiful by Alex Cullen. And JJ's in there. Just gets headed away. That will go out for a corner, though. Not too shabby of a start. 
Not too shabby of a start at all. Alex Cullen to whip in the ball. Paulinho's uh, attempt was headed away. It's Turl. He's had a good goal scoring start to his season as well. Now Porig is Paulinho. Oh, he's done well there. Paulinho, JJ on his, oh, I was going to say on his weaker foot. He managed to get the shot away with his right. Ederson was equal to it. That's going to be another corner. That Alex is going to whip in. Oh, Ibanez got there, but couldn't get any power behind the header. That goes out for a Man City goal kick. It's always very tense when you play Man City. It just is. You can see there on the table, they're just a point ahead of us. But three points for us today would change that. It's going to be offside. Perfect. We'll happily take that. What difficulty do you play on? Uh, I play on Legendary, James. And I put the, the community sliders on. Oh, oh, unlucky. Thought JJ was in there. But uh, yeah, Ultimate, I just think it's... I just don't find it fun. I think Ultimate is pretty... Just it's just infuriating. So I think legendary with sliders is is the best bet. To be honest. Anyways, here's Ferreira. Oh, he's gonna try and chip it over Ederson. Oh, I tell you what, Ederson nearly brought it over the line with him. <sighs> Very nearly took the lead. There is Tarl. Colin. JJ. Oh, good block. Good block. Should be a difficulty between ultimate and legendary. Um, yeah, I mean, I don't know. I don't know. I think they just need to make legendary better. I think that's just the way they need to do it. To be honest. Oh, we nearly went one 0 up there. Tarl with the power shot blocked. But I mean, they've got so many difficulties now. You've got beginner, amateur, semi-pro, professional, world-class, legendary, ultimate. Like, there's plenty of difficulties there. I just think they they need to. Fix legendary, to be honest. But thankfully, the sliders oh, do help us out. JJ did really well there. Is Tarl being pushed back, but finds Calabria. Ah, oh, not the best ball in. Foden now gets there with Pauri. Ferreira meets the header. But Ederson will collect it. Oh, that could be a good ball. Boring is there to collect it as well. Fantastic. Been an intense game so far. Oh, tried to be too clever with that ball there from Ferreira. City get it back. Oh, Halland. Yeah, you cannot give Erling Halland that much space. You just can't. He will absolutely punish you. And it's so typical that would happen. Just as they were showing us the stats in the top right-hand corner, which said in the last 15 minutes, we had so much more possession. Five chances. Five shots, I should say. And then Haaland goes right up the other end and smacks it in. Well, we knew this wasn't going to be easy, but it's been made even more difficult now. Erling Haaland probably should have checked to see how many goals he has in the league there. I know he doesn't have as many as JJ, but still. City on the attack now again. Haaland. Oh, he's just too fucking good. Oh, let's not give away a penalty, though. Oh, okay. We managed to deal with it for now. It's Colin. JJ going on a run through the middle. Does he have the pace? Yes, he does. It's JJ. Oh, it's a good tackle by Vasquez. The former Real Madrid man. Intercepting there. Five minutes now before half time. City still have the lead. 
And they're on the attack again. Silva. Oh, fuck off. Oh, that's poor marking. That's very poor marking. Haaland gets another one. I need to open up this can of monster. I need a bit of energy. But Haaland gets a brace. No. Nah, need to be marking him better than that. Mamardish Philly was never going to get there. Oh, too easy for them. Too easy. 2-0. Two, Two minutes before half time. Oh my god. A referee. Vasquez had a terrible foul there. Right. Come on, let's try and get one more chance before the end of the half. Oh, good ball in, but JJ couldn't get underneath it. Colin, have a go. Oh, Ederson had to put it up for a corner. They're asking me to make, they're already telling me to take off Ferreira, and he's not even injured, but we probably will have to do that at some stage. He's not been having the best game. Oh, brilliant header by Porig! The fat gorilla! He's done it! Perfect, perfect end to the first half. After Haaland put the ball in the back of Arnett twice. Brilliant ball in by Cullen. David Beckham-esque. Porig wins the header. He doesn't score many, Porig. But the ones he does score tend to be very important. I was starting to think that we weren't going to get one before the end of the half. Vasquez should have done way better there. But a bullet header from Porig makes it 2-1 right before the end of the half. Okay. Disappointing to have to go in behind. But the momentum could be with us there. Momentum could be with us there with that goal. I think that's probably Porig's first goal of the season. But anyways, here we go. 2-1. Come on. We've got good momentum now. Gaia, oh, who technically is playing against his old club, because in this career mode, we did sign him from Man City. Oh. Oh, lovely. It's JJ. Oh, it's a good save by Ederson. It's a very good save by Ederson. Is Riyad Mahrez. Oh, City could be in again here. It's Haaland. Very hard to catch. But we intercept the cross. Ferreira, who... I'm willing to keep on for another little bit. Oh, Jesus Christ. Okay, I think he's going to have to come off now. Yeah, next time the ball goes out of play, we're going to bring on Embuemo. Oh, they get a free kick now, Man City, in a very dangerous position. Yeah, it's not been his day, Ferreira. Probably should have put Afif in, really, more than anything. But Embuemo is going to come on. For Miguel Ferreira, who I think I probably will let go of in the summer. I've obviously said I'd like to bring Anthony in. And I still think I want to do that. Kevin De Bruyne, is he going to bury this? Oh, Ibanez. It's so important in FIFA 23 to have a man on the line. Ibanez does really well there to deal with that. Here's Embuemo. And now Chavez, who did score... The winner at the Etihad last season. He's got Alex in support and it's 2-2. And we have turned it around. What a counter-attack. Cleared off the line at one end. Put in the back of the net at the other. Alex Cullen, who loves setting them up this season, gets one of his own today. Chavez, brilliant ball across. Cullen couldn't miss from there. And we do grab an equaliser. Joe Turrell absolutely delighted with that. <sighs> Can we go on and win this now and go top of the league? What a moment that would be. Mamar oh, Mamardashvili, you fucking idiot. Okay, why did he try chipping that? Goalkeeper got away with one there. He really did get away with one. Is in Buemo. Now JJ. JJ's done a beautiful job there. Dylan Tarl. I don't believe this. Oh, I don't believe it. He's missed it. My mic just hit my... 
I hit myself in the... I can't even speak. I hit myself in the face with my mic there. Oh, Dylan Tarl, how has he not hit the target there? Oh. If only that was Tarl setting up JJ. JJ would have buried that. Still 2-2 here. Oh. oh. I'll tell you what, that's very poor there. For Man City. In Buemo! Why did I go for the chip? Why did I go for the chip? Tried to be too clever. Tried to be far too clever there. In Buemo. That's a good run. JJ! Oh, of course it's JJ! Of course it's JJ! Who puts us 3-2 up after being 2-0 down. I said it. I said if JJ had been in Tarl's position, he would have absolutely buried it. And then he gets a chance just moments later. The substitute in Buemo, who's been a breath of fresh air since coming on, cuts it back for him. JJ, he's never going to miss from there. Never, ever going to miss from there. Lovely finish into the side of the net. Klein United 3, Manchester City 2. Are we going top of the league? Well, we've won the league and the conference league in the same season in another career mode. It's early United. Games from JJ. It is insane. Insane, so it is. And that's a big, big one right there, which could potentially be putting us top of the league. Oh, what a moment. 20 minutes to go. A 2 0 down, it looked bleak. It looked very bleak. But we've managed to oh, turn it around brilliantly. JJ went in there. But it was just intercepted at the last second. I think I might make a couple of changes again in a minute. So we do have another big game after this against Liverpool and then a big game against Arsenal. Oh, it's a lovely tackle by Calabria. Right. I am going to give JJ a rest just to make sure he's fit for the Liverpool game. And I'm also going to bring on Schuler for Chavez. It's important to keep these players fresh. They're making an attacking change. Sergio Gomez comes off. As Jack Grealish makes his way onto the pitch and we'll make our subs now as well. Be a nervy few minutes here. I knew that was going to be a free kick. Referee seems to take forever to give it. But De Bruyne. Got to get someone on the line here. Schuler. Don't know if he's going to do much there. He's a bit small. But Man City decides to take it short. And I don't know why they do that. Because it always ends up just hitting one of our players. But I won't complain. I won't complain. Nothing I won't complain about. Here's Furuhashi. Ah. Oh. He was through. But just couldn't quite get it in there. Jack Grealish now. The bench, Alvarez. We will happily claim that in the arms of Mamardashvili. In Buemo. Schuller. Oh, well done. Borahashi. Borahashi. The signing from Celtic. Oh, good effort. Good effort, but he couldn't get it in there. Right, we can make one more change. Jose Guy, I think, will be the man to come off. Pora can go to left back. And we'll bring on Kent for the final five minutes. They're taking off Lucas, uh, Lucas Vazquez for João Cancelo. Who has returned from his loan at Bayern Munich. Don't know if that will happen in real life. <laughs> but now we can make our change. Gaia, who technically, as I say, in this career mode is a former Man City player. He was there last season until we rescued him. He comes off now for the final five minutes as Kent makes his way onto the pitch. Cullen whipping the ball. Ooh, cleared away. Horik will get there, though. The man who got the first goal today is Kent. Ooh, that was a risky ball across for Polinia. Oh, Polinia has done really well there. He has done really well there. Oh, but he's... Okay, he hasn't thought he'd messed it up there. City are pressing very high here. Kent. 
the young future star goes back to Mamardashvili how many added minutes are there going to be four where's he getting the four added minutes from what was that what was that he's offside is he he's offside oh thank god thank fucking god for that just three more minutes to hold on for a big three points here Ibanez God, the passing's not been great, but from that can go for both teams. Alex Cullen. Go on, Alex. Come on, ref. Blow the whistle. Blow the fucking whistle, ref. Come on, they went way too far back there. Yes! Get in. What a comeback. What a comeback. Clyde United go top of the Premier League after Erling Haaland looked like he dented those hopes by scoring two in the first half. Porig pulled one back right on the stroke of half time. Before Chavez's brilliant run led to Cullen equalising. And of course, who else would it be to get the winner but the legend himself, the English Van Nistelrooy, JJ. Oh, what a moment. What a moment. And what a result as well. Oh, this is a big episode. We've got some big games today. We needed a strong start. And boy, have we got one. Oh. Ibanez is happy with the amount of games he's playing. I'm happy with Ibanez too. But the games do not get any easier, lads. We are going to be playing Liverpool at Anfield, who, as you can see, are in 10th place. But look at that. Look at that. Clawing United, top of the league. 10 wins from 13 games. Villa still unbeaten behind us. Who obviously did beat us on the opening day. But Liverpool, despite being in 10th, Listen, it's Anfield. I'm not going to take Liverpool lightly. I'm going to do a pre-match uh, pre press conference okay, here as well. Guys, we're start with the questions now. I can depend on everybody. Even though there are some players who I think I will have to get rid of at some stage. Uh, we're ready for Liverpool. And we will also say that uh, I think there is more to come. That's some good answers that we gave there. So right, we will go in the Ireland kit. Uh, anyone a bit tired? Okay, we have a couple of tired legs here. Not tired legs, but you know, they're missing a little bit of energy. But I think I am going to go with the strongest team. But I am going to put Embuemo in and Ferreira. I'm actually going to take him off, put Afif on the bench. Yeah, I think that's probably the best thing to go with. A couple of players are missing a little bit of energy, but nothing overly concerning. And listen, we've got good options off the bench should we need to use them. With that said... Let's go to Anfield and hopefully claim another three points. One of my least favourite stadiums for obvious reasons. But let's hope today that we can leave our mark on it. Right, we come here top of the league, Liverpool in 10th, but still, I don't think you can count Liverpool out just yet. That's going to be a corner kick for Clown United as we attack the cop end here in the first half. Oh, Porig nearly scored another one. Jesus. I wonder what he's been doing in training this week. He's fucking getting so many chances. From these corners. We've arsed on then after this. What a tough episode. At least we have that Conference League game, which is a bit of a dead rubber game, so we can put out a completely rotated team. Just play the reserves. Even on the bench, I'll try and put, you know, as many youth players as, as I can. There's Diogo Jota. Oh, well done. Well done. Tarl out to Porig, who fancies himself as a bit of an attacker now, I think. But Acuna intercepts the ball off him there. Calabria. Oh, oh it's going to be a goal, I think. Oh, Mamardashvili has to make the save. Has to make the save there. Cody Gakpo. Nearly putting the Scousers 1-0 up. Salah with the corner is Acuna. Oh, great tackle by Luis Chavez. Risky ball back to Calabria. Liverpool regain it again. 
But then we get it back straight away. Now here's Embuemo. Oh, that's a great ball down for JJ. JJ. Oh, did get the shot away. I think it might have taken a deflection because the sting was taken out of it. Still nil nil here at Anfield. Ibanez with a good tackle there. Is Tarl into Cullen. Oh. Tack was just broken down there. Trent Alexander Arnold into Salah. Mo Salah. Trent Alexander Arnold. Back to Salah. This is getting me nervous. Oh, Salah. Oh, he's done really well there, to be fair, Mo Salah. And he gives Liverpool the lead. Well, I just knew after that, the way he turned Ibanez there. Or uh, Gaia, I should say. I just knew that was going to end up in the back of the net. It's only his fifth goal of the season, Salah. He's not being as... He's not been as prolific as he normally is in this career mode. Which I'm happy with, but of course, he ends up fucking scoring against us. Oh, but Alex goes right up the other end and scores a brilliant equaliser. How did he squeeze that through the legs of Allison? I don't even think he knows. He's just running around in the net at the moment. I was not expecting that to go in. I was just about to say I think we've overran it. Best I was hoping for was a corner. But squeezes it right underneath the legs of Alison Becker. And Alex has scored in back-to-back -back games now against Man City and Liverpool. And we weren't behind for long. 1-1. One, one. I think that's his seventh goal of the season now for Alex. With about 15, I think, assists. 12 or 15 assists on top of that. So that's a very, very good return so far. Oh, Ibanez. Jesus Christ. No power at all behind that pass. Oh, he's offside. He's well offside. Got away with one there. We got away with one there. In Buemo. Out for a throw in. Would Phil Jones, that's Phil Jones, please contact your nearest steward. Thank you. Calabria. Well, it's a good ball out to Alex. Colin. JJ. Blocked. Turl. Oh, out for a corner. Oh, what a moment that was. Dylan Turl. Fell so kindly for him. Trent just about got in the way. It'll be Colin to whip in the corner. Oh, it's a bit deep. JJ does win it. Chavez. Oh, does win another corner. We're putting Liverpool under a lot of pressure here. We are putting Liverpool under a lot of pressure. Alex Colin. Good ball in again, but just couldn't quite get underneath it. Jose Gaia. Oh, lucky. He was looking for JJ, but... Oh! Oh, why? Why? Oh, why did it go there? I was trying to pass to Chavez, who essentially had a tap in there. But for some reason, he decided to pass it further back. Oh, it's ridiculous. Absolutely ridiculous. Is Calabria. Now Tarl. Polinia. Oh. Last ditch tackle there. But five minutes to go before half time. Still 1 1 here at Anfield. But Liverpool are on the attack now with Salah. Can Gaia get the better of him? No, he can't. It's Jota. Oh, Mamar Dishvili. With a big save. A big, big save there. Well, I'd be so disappointed to go in behind in this game. Especially when we've had so many chances there at the other end. And we've actually played quite well. Thomas Muller, who plays for Liverpool in this, which is so weird. Muller. Jota. 
Verts. Oh, for fuck's sake. Oh, that's annoying. Oh, I don't even want to watch that back. Fuck that. I'm not watching that back. Oh, Liverpool take the lead right before the end of the half. That is so typical. So bloody typical that we have all those chances. And of course it's his first fucking goal of the season. In the league at least. Can we get one more chance ourselves though? Dylan Tarl. Oh yes we can! Dylan Tarl! Oh! It's another equaliser! Dylan Tarl, the captain with a captain strike. Liverpool thought they were going in front at the end of this half. God, they love making me want to make a first half sub. We're not going to do that. But Tarl with a lovely finish. He was unlucky against Man City to not get one. But he's got one here against Liverpool. His seventh league goal of the season. Very, very good numbers indeed from our captain. And it will be 2-2 at half time at Anfield. Let's see, can we capitalize on this and get a winner? Did not expect us to be in a title race, I have to say. So we do have a golden opportunity here to... Oh, bollocks. Bollocks, bollocks, bollocks! Oh, good save. We have a golden opportunity here to... Uh... Surprise a lot of people by staying on top of the league. It'd be a big statement to do it as well before Christmas. Paulinha! Oh, unlucky. Unlucky. Just went behind him. Diogo Jota now. Gaia will do well to intercept that and give it to Mamar Dishvili. We have to be careful here. We have to be careful. As I say, Liverpool, they're not having the best season, but they still have players that can do damage. Oh, like this man here, Mo Salah, who does put them back in fucking front. <coughs> that is so irritating. The Egyptian strikes again. I get look at this though, giving him far too much space, far too much space, and he was never really going to miss from there. Well, I mean, unless Mamadish really pulled off a great save, which we know he's capable of, but you can't hold it against him too much there. It's a very good finish. It is a very good finish. Oh, Calabria. Oh, we're just going to fall apart now, aren't we? We're about to fall apart. Brilliant by Porig. Absolutely brilliant tackle there by Porig. His Cullen and Tarl. Tarl has got JJ in support. Can he find him? Yes, he can. And it's 3-3. Oh, what a game. This is an Anfield. This has been unbelievable. It's all the created players. Who are bagging in the goals in this episode. That was fantastic. Tarl did really well there. JJ broke away from the man who was marking him. And it's 3-3 here at Anfield. Incredible scenes. Incredible scenes. Well, you knew this was going to be a tough episode, but bloody hell. Goals galore. At both ends in every game. 25th league goal of the season for JJ. There's Embuemo. Oh, lucky. Still half an hour to go. That's the thing. There's still a good chunk of this game left. Arsenal after this. Trent Alexander-Arnold. Oh, Mamadishvili with the save. They're asking us to take off Paulinha. Which, you know what, I'm kind of tempted to do, but with all due respect to Cocaine Bear, I think I'm actually going to put Porik as a CDM, and I'm going to bring on Kent as a centre-back. How does Kent do at CDM? Oh, Kent actually gets a plus four at CDM. Okay, never mind, Porik can stay at the back. Let's try Kent as a CDM. Oh, that could be something to look out for in the future as well Muller is coming off though for I think that's Thiago yes it is Polinia is starting to get a wee bit tired and I think we do need a bit of energy 
bear. I just I don't know if this is a game that will suit him. But we're going to bring on Kent as a CDM and see how he gets on. And let's see what happens. Here's Salah. Can we get on the break here with Gaia? I notice I'm a lot quieter in this episode, but I'm just trying to focus here now. Is Gaia? Oh, he took too heavy a touch and he couldn't recover it. I don't know where his leg's just going a bit, Jose Gaia. We might have to take him off in a minute. Oh, Porig does well there against Salah. Mamardishvili could have came out to claim that, but he decided not to. Right, I'm uh, going to make a couple of changes. is going to come off for Afif, and I am going to take off Gaia because he is getting a bit tired. Gallardo. I feel like he hasn't made an appearance in a Premier League game for a while, but he has a big chance here. Afif, who I feel like is a bit of a big game player for us. He's got a chance here to make a good impression. Oh, Salah's absolutely done Chavez there. <sighs> got to be careful in the box. Jota. Cunha. Well done, Calabria. Well done, lad. Colin. Mm, unlucky. Oh, no, never mind. I thought he lost it for a second. My eyes were playing tricks on me. Oh, my God. Afif! Oh, it was JJ I was looking for, but I thought he put no power behind it, Afif. I thought for a second he was going to bury that. Oh, so unlucky. So unlucky. And now Liverpool... Look to break as well. Gallardo. Oh, good interception there from the left back who also wins the throw in. Cody Gakbo is coming off for Luis Diaz. What an option that is to bring off the bench. But Porig has to be careful there. He's done well. Ibanez. Ibanez. Calab uh, what's his name? Calabria. Mamardashvili. Nine minutes to go. Can we grab a winner? Porig has done really well there. Gallardo. Chavez. Afif here out wide. Afif. Afif. Oh. Just missed. Kicked it in the end, JJ. Liverpool are on the attack again. Oh, they're going to fucking score, aren't they, the bastards? They're going to fucking do it. Oh. Is that a corner? It is. Five minutes to go. Darwin Nunes is on for Jota. Oh, well done. Alex Cullen there. He's been brilliant in this episode so far. Out to Afif as well, who has the energy to run. Go on, lad. Oh, go on. Afif, he's gotten one big goal against United this season, and he may have just got another one. Well, he has just got another one, but it may be a winner against Liverpool at Anfield. 4-3. Oh, what a moment. What a moment for Afif. The Liverpool players collapse onto the floor. They can't quite believe it. I can't quite believe it, to be honest. What a run by Afif. Oh, it's a lovely finish as well. 4-3 at Anfield. Two absolute classic games here. Oh, beautiful finish. Beautiful finish. Look at what it means to him. He got injured at the end of last season. Took him a while to get going. It's only his third Premier League appearance of the season. But in two of those games, he scored an important goal against United. And he's also now got one here against Liverpool. Which could be a winner. Okay, Cocaine Bear is going to come on. Um... And what else will I do? I'm going to bring on... Okay, how does Calabria do as a winger? Oh, God, terrible. What about Hobbs? Oh, you know what? I don't care. Hobbs is going to replace Colin just to give him a rest. So, a couple of defensive changes here. Just a minute to go. At Anfield. What a three points this could be if we could get them. It would be absolutely insane if we could get this win here. Right, got to stay focused, got to stay focused. Oh, 
Oh, oh no. Darwin Nunes, good block. Good block by Paul Rigg. Four out of minutes. We're already two minutes into the four out of minutes. They've brought up Allison. They've pretty much got everybody in the box at the moment, Liverpool. And they still have it. Oh, oh no. Oh, get rid of it. Oh, oh, get rid of it. Come on. No, 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 no. That's not where we wanted it to bounce. No, no, fuck off, Salah. Oh, I thought that was a penalty. My heart completely sank. But it is all over. That's all she wrote. Clawing United with a huge win here at Anfield after a brilliant result against Man City. Two absolutely fantastic, intense performances from the lads. What a moment. You can see what it means. JJ, the legend himself, on the score sheet again. Afif came off the bench to get the winner in what turned out to be an inspired substitution. Oh, my God. Liverpool 3, Cloyne United 4. Absolutely insane stuff. Four different goal scorers as well, which is really cool to see. Oh, brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. Kent, I thought, did all right at CDM. Didn't have an awful lot to do. But it was something worth trying. And that puts us two points clear of Man... Keeps us two points clear, I should say, of Man City, who are in second. Villa drew another game, but still unbeaten. They're only four points behind us in third. Arsenal up next. Let's have a look at these uh, youth academy players. Let's see, actually, is there anyone worth getting rid of here? This McConnell guy actually looks like he could be uh, quite decent. It's good to see. Uh, Donald Kane, the same. Ronan Burke, yeah, he looks good. Uh, Malangu, not too shabby. Uh, Jason Flynn, also looks very decent. Ruben Daniel, definitely think he could, there could be a future for him. Uh, this other Malangu, great potential, but a very, very weak starting overall. I feel like he's probably going to have to change his position. Yeah, let's make him a winger and see if that helps him go up. Uh, Connor Duffy, probably not going to be good enough. Uh, this Shabab Alala guy, we already have someone with that name. He can go. Um, and I think we'll keep everyone else in here. But McConnell, Cottle McConnell, is someone we're going to have to keep an eye out for. Right, Arsenal up next. They are in eighth place, but still not going to be taking them lightly at all. It's going to be a rainy day in Cloyne. But hopefully we can make it a rainy day for Arsenal. That was probably one of my weaker analogies there. Okay, we're starting to see a lot more tired legs now. Uh, so we got to be careful. Afif, I think he's earned a start there. I'm going to keep Ferreira out. I'll play Ferreira in the Conference League game. Afif is going to go there in Buemo on the bench. Ibanez is a bit tired. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to play Paulinha at centre-back. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna try that. Polonia is gonna go centre back alongside Porig, and we're gonna put Kent at CDM again, because I do want to see how he can. Oh, a cocaine bear! No, we're gonna keep him on the bench. I was gonna say he's just gone up to 80 rated. Will we give him a game? But I think we'll we'll uh, we'll leave him on the bench. I want to give this a go. I know your people will be wondering why you're playing a centre back at CDM and a CDM at centre back. It's because look at this. Like Kent, obviously, he's got five star weak foot, but he is left footed, which Porig is also. And Paulinha, he actually gets a plus six as a centre-back. So he's essentially a 90-rated centre-back. And Kent actually does quite well as a CDM. And it just gives us that balance of having a right-footed and left-footed centre-back. And Kent can still do the job there at CDM. We have Bear on the bench if we need him. Ibanez, I'll keep him on the bench, but I don't know if he's going to play in this game. 82 fitness. He is a good bit tired. Uh, Porig would probably have to take off at one stage. Uh, same with Chavez, um, but we'll see. We'll see how it goes with everyone else. But here we go, another big game here against Arsenal. Let's get another big three points. Two wins from two, in two very competitive games. And we have another one here. There's the English fan, Mr. Roy himself, JJ. He looks prepared and ready to go. Here we go. Against the Gunners. We're still top of the league. Which I never expected to be at this point in the season. But let's try and stay here while we're here. We did win the league and the Conference League, as I say, with Tarly United. Back in the day. 
I say back in the day, that was like six months ago, but you know what I mean. <laughs> well, probably more than six. Jesus Christ, that was probably like nine or ten months ago now, actually, now that I think about it. Can we do it again here with Cloyne United? Stranger things have happened. Stranger things have happened. That's a great ball to Colin. Labria was trying to overlap, but we don't really need him for now. Colin's ball in. Nobody in there. Oh, Gaia. Now it's Afif. Oh, not a great ball. Arsenal still have a lot of the players that they would have started with. Jesus, Martinelli. I think I saw Odegaard there. So it's a surprise to see that they're not doing as well as you would expect, but that's FIFA for you. Porik has had a great episode so far. Out to Gaia. Chavez is making a run there, but the goal right in the hands of Matt Turner, the American who's playing in goal for Arsenal today, and not Aaron Ramsdale. Interesting. Kent with a good header there. Here's Colin. Now Tarl. Oh, great ball. JJ. Oh, good save by Turner. Oh, it's going to be a foul, I think. Yeah. Afif couldn't win the ball cleanly there. And it's a free kick to Arsenal. So Matt Turner will take short to Mary. It's El Nenny. Thomas Partey. Zinchenko. Martin Odegaard. Oh, good tackle there. Calabria. Oh, looking for JJ, who did get there. But unfortunately, it was a good tackle by the Arsenal player. Martinelli now in a promising position for Arsenal here. And then he shoots wide. But despite winning both games today, we have gone 1-0 down in both of those. So it would be nice to take the lead in this one for a change. Tarl. Can we do that here with JJ? Oh, it's still there. Oh, we do take the lead. It's Luis Chavez with just his second goal of the season. The first one was against United. He's got his second one here against Arsenal. It was a lovely first-time finish. And we take the lead. Finally, for the first time today, we go 1-0 up. Tarl, it was a promising ball for JJ. Headed away. Landed right at the left foot of Chavez, who smacked it past Matt Turner. That is a brilliant goal. Keeper maybe could have done a little bit better, but we don't care. Chavez, second strike of the season. Got them in two big games. First against United, now he's got one against Arsenal. Not been as prolific this season as he was last season. Luis Chavez, but he's still putting in some very good performances. And we... Are two, excuse me, one nil up. Saka. Who I also thought about signing in this career mode. Um, as a left-footed player who could play. Oh my god. Oh, for fuck's sake. Oh, that's so typical. Martinelli. 1-1. And our lead didn't last for long. Still making so many mistakes defensively. We really, really need to start improving. We really, really do. To be fair, Odegaard. Lovely little flick. And Martinelli. Martinelli makes it 1-1. One, one. But as I say, I do want to bring in another left-sided player that can play on the left. And I was thinking about Saka. Because I just think left-footed players do so much better on the left wing in FIFA this year. I really, really do. But Arsenal have equalised here. The thing about these big teams, even when they're struggling in the in the career mode, you can't take them too lightly. And they could be about to go in front here. Mamardashvili comes out to make a brilliant save there. Absolutely fantastic save from the Georgian goalkeeper.
What's happened there? He's hardly given a penalty. Oh my god, he's given a penalty. He literally ran into it. That's the most delayed reaction I've ever seen in my life. He runs into Afif, who's now picked up a yellow card as well for his troubles. I can't believe he's given a penalty for that. That is ridiculous. It's the third episode in a row where I've given away a penalty. But Mamadashvili, who has such a great save rate for these penalties, saves yet another one. Very poor by Saka, who has a habit of missing penalties as of late. Mamadashvili, brilliant save, keeps the game at 1-1. But Arsenal very nearly taking the lead there. It was such a harsh decision. I don't think it was a yellow card. Like, if you think it's a foul, it's, it wasn't worthy of a yellow. Saka with another strike there, and it's going to get another corner. Absolutely ridiculous. Mamadashvili getting a bit frustrated with his defence, I think. Odegaard now at the corner. God, we give him another corner again. I think we're just starting to feel a bit leggy now in these games because a lot of these players have played all three games and they've been so close to each other. Three huge games in the space of a week, pretty much. So I'm glad that Conference League game is, as I say, a bit of a dead rubber so we can just rest all the players that we need to rest. Obviously, we did have to put Ibanez on the bench today. I just felt like he wasn't looking fit enough to play. Here's Calabria. Oh, it's a lovely ball to Dylan Tarl. Trying to pick out JJ in the middle, a bit too far out for him. Kent, though, does really well. It's JJ. Oh, he's hit the post. Afif. What was that? That was supposed to be a shot. And somehow, it went closer to the centre circle than it did to the fucking net. Good tackle by Porig. He keeps the ball in play as well, and JJ will retain possession. Lovely stuff as we head into stoppage time. Oh, Afif, brilliant tackle. He's got to be careful, obviously, being on that yellow card. But he's still having a good game. The man that got the winner at Anfield. But it's 1-1 here. Between Cloyne United and Arsenal. Arsenal nearly going 2-1 up after getting a very, very unfair penalty. It was justice, really, that they missed it. Brilliant save again by Mamardashvili, who's now saved a penalty in each of the last three episodes. But 1-1. Won't make any changes yet at half-time. Because I don't think we're actually playing that badly. But we need to up the urgency a bit, maybe. Try and get this second goal. Stop Arsenal from doing it here. Good run by Martinelli. Oh, I thought that was going to be another penalty. Oh, that's ricocheted awkwardly. Thankfully, Mamardashvili will collect that in his grasp. What's up with Jose Gaia? Gives it to Luis Chavez. Got Afif in support and he uses him. Afif's done really well there. Chavez. Oh, JJ. And Tarl. Oh, it's another big goal from Dylan Tarl. Back to back games. He's scored in now. We regain the lead against Arsenal. The billionaire strut is out again. The captain with the strike. Well, Roy Keane was a centre midfielder from Cork who. Loved playing against Arsenal. And I think Dylan Turl is feeling the exact same here. Same number and everything. And Keane did get a couple of important goals against Arsenal back in 1999. Turl has gotten a very important one here in the year 2023. And we regain the lead. Thankfully. Oh. Hang on, let me just hold that thought for a second. I was holding my breath there, Jesus Christ. Need to remember to breathe. Uh, but thankfully, what was I just going to say? I can't even remember what I was going to say now. Fuck it, will come back to me in a bit. But anyways, JJ, lovely ball out to Afif. Chavez. Oh, can he get another one? Chavez! Oh, it's a good save. I think what I was going to say was thankfully some of the tired legs aren't letting us down. But they will have a rest after this before the Brighton game, which is good. Thomas Partey comes off for Saliba, which is an interesting sub. 
Alex Cullen with the ball in. Porig, who scored one in this episode, is looking for another one. Dylan Tarl, ooh. Probably didn't hit that as well as he would have liked. Need to plug in my remote here. It's about to run out of battery. Just bear with me a second. There we go. Is it charging? Yes, it is. Perfect. Right, sorry, my chat is after disappearing on me. Just bear with me a moment. I didn't even notice that because it's been a bit quiet tonight. <laughs> uh, there we go. It's back. Nice one. Oh, oh my God. Arsenal are in again here. Oh, for fuck's sake. That's so fucking irritating. Both times we score, Arsenal go right up the other end and get another one. It's 2-2 two -two here. Odegaard with the ball in. Jesus with the finish. It's a brilliant finish, but it's so frustrating. That's a really irritating goal to concede. 2-2. Two -two. Back to square one yet again. 10-14 and 14 for Jesus. He's no JJ, but he's not having a bad season at all. That's a very good ratio. JJ is just taking it to a ridiculous level. Speak of the devil, here he is, JJ. And we go up the other end and score. And it's JJ with his first goal of the game. 3-2. I tell you what, every game we've played so far, JJ's gotten the third goal, which has always proven to be a crucial one. Did it against City, did it against Liverpool. And now he's done it here against Arsenal with his weak foot as well. Turner maybe could have done better there. But who cares, JJ, 26 league goals now for the season. Absolutely insane numbers. And I believe just his 15th game. So I think we're 15 games in. I know he's played all of them. Unbelievable. Absolutely unbelievable. Yeah, 26 and 15. It's crazy stuff. Good interception there by Tarl, which stops Arsenal from going right up the other end and scoring again. Let's just hold on to it here. Don't need to do anything silly. It's Calabria. Now JJ. Oh, looking for Chavez. Couldn't quite get there. Jesus. Over to Martinelli. Still 20 minutes to go here. It's far from over. Calabria has been completely outpaced there. Oh, for f that is ridiculous. That is ridiculous. How did that go in? How the fuck has that gone in? Oh, my God. We can't... <laughs> Listen, never a dull moment. Never a dull moment. That's the slogan of this career world. I can't believe it's taken me that long to say that today. But, like, I mean, how is Porig not intercepting that? Not that I'm trying to get stuck in him. But he's come right across. And Mamadishvili should be doing better there. 3-3. <sighs> feel like we'll need to make a change. Afif, not been his best game today. I feel like Afif nearly does better when he comes off the bench. And he is on a yellow, so we'll play it safe. And bring on him way more. Um... I am also going to bring on Schuler because Chavez, despite scoring, is getting a bit tired. Porig is a bit knackered as well, but I'm going to keep him on for now. I'm going to bring on Hobbs, I think, for Calabria because he's he just got completely outpaced there. I think he's starting to feel the legginess a bit. But 3-3 three, three here with 20 minutes to go. End-to-end -end stuff in this game. End-to-end -end stuff. Oh, and Buemo. Oh, that's really well done. It's JJ. Oh, there's no power behind the shot. And it goes out for a corner kick. They're taking off Gabriel Jesus now for Immobile. Or Immobile, I actually don't know how you say it. I've heard both, and I still don't know. Collins ball in. And Buemo, have a goal, lad. Why not? Oh, what a goal! What a goal by Embuemo! Oh, he smacked that in! Well, him and Afif both seem to play so much better when they come off the bench. The power strike has finally worked. Embuemo, what a hit! Turner! Absolutely shell left shell shocked in his goal. He can't believe it. He just felt the wind go past him. Embuemo's third league goal of the season. And it's 4-3 here. We have been playing some absolutely crazy games today. 
This has been on freaking believable. Can we hold on now? Can we hold on? Oh, brilliant by Tarl. Come on, let's get a fifth. Let's get a fifth. It's in Buemo again. Over to JJ. And it is a fifth. 5 3. Surely now that's going to wrap up three points. JJ again. Oh, what a game. What an episode. What an episode this has been. It's a shame the real JJ can't be here to see this. I'm sure he'll go and watch it back. But 5 3. So 3 2 against Man City after going 2 0 down. 4 3 against Liverpool at Anfield. And now 5 3 here at home against Arsenal. This has been insane. Absolutely insane. What a game. And what an episode. I've loved every second of it. I've loved every second. 27 goals now and 15 for JJ. He is an absolute cheat code, so he is. We did play Wolves a couple of episodes ago where I ooh, felt like every shot was going in the back of the net as Arsenal nearly get a fourth there. And I feel like they still will get it here. Mamardashvili with the save. I think I'm going to make another change. Uh, I am going to bring on Cocaine Bear. Uh, that's not what I meant. We're going to put Kent back into centre-back. We'll give Porig a rest. For the final seven minutes or so here. Oh my god, this has been a crazy episode, lads. Absolutely crazy. Martin Odegaard is coming off for Jorginho, which is a very interesting change to make when you're trying to chase two goals. I mean, see that thing up there when they were showing the stats of the shots. And for JJ, it still shows club as club name, abbreviation, and then a load of numbers after it. That's been there since last year. Like, that's crazy. How the fuck have they not fixed that issue? It's such a, it's an absolute joke. It's a joke. It, no, it really does annoy me, because you wouldn't see something like that in fucking Ultimate Team. You wouldn't. Arsenal... Still on the attack here. That's offside, surely. Saka is surely offside. No, apparently not. Thought we were going to give another penalty there. Gaia can just get rid of it. And I'm going to make a time-wasting substitution here now. Uh, Paulinho has done his job. Ibanez, despite being tired, I think he's played every game in the league so far this season. We'll keep that ratio up. He can come on for the last few seconds. Been very happy with Paulinho's performance, though. Did really well as a makeshift centre-back today. Ibanez can come on now to stretch his legs. to play down the clock a bit more as well oh it's going to be a goal here though I think oh it nearly was a fourth six minutes of added time Jorginho well, I was criticising that substitution there a second ago but I tell you what he got very close to scoring there very very close to scoring so he did Mamardashvili though can take the goal kick here's Kent who gets a 90 minutes in a big game which is very good I feel so much better now that we're actually getting him proper game time this season because last season we did struggle a bit just because we had less games because we weren't in Europe and you know he was still growing in his overall but uh, now he's doing it by playing some key roles in big games can we make it 6-3 and can JJ get a hat trick oh it's Tarl oh I really wanted that to go to JJ but couldn't Get it in. It is JJ. It is a hat-trick for JJ. Oh, right in the last minute of stoppage time. 6-3. Incredible stuff. JJ will bring home the match ball for the third time, I believe. Or the fourth time, I think, in the Premier League this season, which is insane as well. Tarl over to Schuler. Back to Tarl. JJ with the finish. 6-3 here against Arsenal. What an entertaining episode. <laughs> What an entertaining episode in terms of scorelines, at least. JJ banging them in left, right and centre. 28 in the league now. And that will be essentially the final kick of the ball in the game. Unbelievable stuff. Well, after those three games in a week, the lads, I'm sure, will be absolutely knackered. At least most of them. But they've done themselves proud. And they'll be about to get a well-earned rest against... Sandiford, but we'll pull out a completely rotated team as JJ collects the match ball. 6 3. 
Oh, fantastic. Fantastic stuff. That was a brilliant game. That was a very, very entertaining game. I enjoyed that one. Cardosa. Oh, yeah, we were looking at him. Yeah, he looks like he could be a good signing eventually, actually. A left-footed centre-back, 18 years old. Similar to Kent, but could be someone to keep an eye on for the future. Palinja had a brilliant performance at centre-back. He'll do for me. Of course he will. Right, we do have this game here against Sandiford. It is a bit of a dead rubber game, as I say. And Buemo wants to play it, so we probably will give him a game in it. We've already topped the group. So let's make a few changes. I'm going to keep Mamar Dishvili in goal. But Hobbs, of course, will come in. Uh, I'll keep Ibanez in the start, just because he didn't start the last game. So just to keep his sharpness up, we'll put him in the start. Kent did just get 90 minutes, but you know what? He's going to get another 90 minutes. Uh, Gallardo is going to play. Cocaine Bear is going to play. Didn't mean to put him there, though. Uh, we are also going to bring in uh, maybe Cardoso, because he hasn't played a lot this season. Uh, Schuler can go there as well. Ferreira, I will start uh, over there. I'll put Embuemo on the right. Farahashi can go up front. And now on the bench as well, we'll make some changes. I'll put Alonso on the bench, the backup goalkeeper. Maybe we can bring him off the bench just to give him, uh, give him an appearance this season. Uh, Cardoso... Young centre-back, he can go on the bench. Because uh, Fernandez is someone I'm going to be looking to move on, to be honest with you, uh, at some stage. So, might even be this season. He's just he's just not good enough. He just really isn't good enough. So, that's something we're going to have to look out for in the future. Tavares can go on the bench. Uh, Afif can go on the bench. We'll give JJ a rest. Uh, Abru, I would like to bring on at some stage. Scored in the last Conference League game. So, it could be good to keep him on. And uh, this Serrano guy can also go there as well. He is a CDM, but he actually plays better as a centre-back, so uh, it'll be interesting to see what happens there. I'm in two minds. Part of me is tempted to sim this game and just play the Brighton game, but also I kind of want to play this game myself just to give this team... Actually, no, do you know what? We will sim it. Fuck it, we will. I'm not going to quick sim. I'm going to sim it myself because I want to be able to be in control of making the changes and stuff, so let's see how we go here. Against Sandiford in the Conference League. We've already topped the group with five wins. Let's see what happens. Nice to actually give myself just a bit of a rest as well. And yeah, then we can play the Brighton game and finish up the episode, hopefully with four wins from four in the league. Oh, we nearly got 1-0 up there. Cardoso playing his first game in ages. Very nearly got. Well, that was the last time we played him. But we're the ones getting the chances here. Ibanez, as we say, just trying to keep his sharpness up. I'll probably end up taking him off at half time. Twenty minutes in here, still nil nil. Great ball for Hashi. Gets the opening goal of the game. I think that's five and five now for him in the Conference League. He did get the winner in the opening game against uh, Union. And he's gotten one here on the last uh, group in in the last group game. We will have a look at the European groups as well, actually, after this, just to see uh, how they went and just see who qualified uh, from the Europa Com Conference League groups. And also to take a look at who will be dropping down from the Europa League, because, of course, just like in the Champions League, the way th the third-place teams drop down to the Europa League, with the Europa Conference League, the third-place teams in the Europa League drop down to the Conference League. So it'll be interesting to see some potential opponents for the last 16. But thank God we're avoiding the preliminary round which we didn't avoid in Turley United, so that will definitely do us well in the long run. Corner here for Sandy Ford, who, remember, we beat 8-0 away from home in the first game, so they're already doing a little bit better than they did last time out, but that will be half-time. Lovely stuff. Uh, Ibanez is actually not doing too bad, stamina-wise. Uh, I think what I might do is I do want to give Abrau, Abrau, Abru, however you say it, I want to give him 45 minutes because he looks like he could be a very promising young player and I do want to start playing him a bit more. So we're going to do that. I'm going to bring on Tavares for... Uh, let me check something here, actually. Just out of curiosity. Okay, he can do the job as a centre forward, but we won't do that now. Uh, no, do you know what, actually? That's the only change I'm going to make at halftime. That's the only change we'll make at halftime. We'll make other changes as the half goes on. 1-0 up. Hopefully there's more where that came from. Maybe with about half an hour left, we can uh, make a few more changes. 
and uh, be on our merry way. I'd still like to win this game, though. It'd be nice to get six wins from six. Which is not easy to get in any European competition. So that'd be cool to get that here. Ooh. Unlucky. Yeah, I think I might make the rest of my changes. Next time the ball goes out of play, we'll make the rest of our changes. Just to give some people an appearance. So we'll do that now. Sorry, I'm just trying to plug up my headphones because I was charging them a bit. Uh, so yeah, that's what we'll do. We're going to bring on uh, Cardoso can come on for Ibanez. That's perfect. Uh, I will also bring on um, Tavares can go over on the right for Mbwemo. Um, I will bring on... We'll, we'll put Alonso in goal. Why not? We'll give him a game in goal. First appearance of the season. May as well. Um... Serrano, I think, can actually play right back as well. Yeah, we'll give him a game at right back. I think we get one more change, do we? No, we're out of subs. Uh, yeah, I think that's what we'll... Yeah, that's what we'll do. Uh, oh, God, they got a penalty. Oh, my God, they've got a penalty, and I've just taken off Mamardashvili. That's so typical. Oh, they miss it. Alonso. Alonso, his first call of action this season is to save a penalty. But well, Mamar Deshvili has been doing that in the last three episodes. But Alonso, fair play to him. His first appearance of the season. We bring him off the bench. I feel kind of bad for him that he's just wasting away there. Um, but he comes on and saves a penalty in a European game. How bad. Oh, but then he fucking lets one in. Typical. Absolutely typical that he lets one in. Oh, look, it doesn't really matter. It doesn't matter. As I say, we've already qualified as group winners. I just don't want to lose. I'd be annoyed to lose. But, uh... Yeah, that's why we tend to keep Mamardashvili in goal. But still, at least Alonso can say he's played this season. Seven minutes left. I thought that was going to be a foul there. Is there going to be any late goal here? Could be from Sandiford. Oh my god, don't tell me they're going to win it. Oh my god, they've won it right at the end, Sandiford. I can't believe it. Oh, well that was a mistake then, bringing on Alonso. Oh, we lose our last game after five straight wins. Well, look, I'd love to say that I care, but I don't. It literally makes no difference to us. But it's a shame we couldn't stay unbeaten in the group. But whatever. We'd still qualified as group winners. Uh, Ibanez, oh, he's angry. He's angry. But, lad, we were only playing it for your sharpness uh, to, to go up. Uh, you should know that. Right, I think I'm going to... Yeah, maybe I'll do it afterwards, the permanent change. Uh, right, let's have a look at the European groups. Let's see who finished where. So we'll have a look at our group first. So we did, of course, top the group. Sandiford, despite beating them 8-0, they did come to our place and get a 2-1 win. And that was enough to put them into the preliminary round of the Conference League, which, fair play to them. That was not an easy result for them to recover from. But I'm sure if we'd played that game, we would have dismantled them. But whatever. They, uh, they do get the win, which meant they qualified. Zurich just missed out. And... The Belgian team this time, unlike in Tarly United, did not cause any upset. So let's go through the other groups in order. Malmo topped over Sporting, which is a bit of a surprise. So Malmo go to the last 16. Sporting go to the prelims. I'm just going to say prelims because it's easier to say. Uh, Zagreb topped the group with Trabzonspor finishing second. Uh, Hoffenheim over Atlantispor. Lask just missing out there. Monza over Genk. Lega Warsaw dropping out. Might be a little bit of a surprise to some people. And, of course, there was our group. Uh, Feyenoord go through on head-to-head -head results over Nantes. So Feyenoord will go to the last 16 with Nantes going to the prelims. Sociedad top that group. Six wins from six. No surprise there. Athens coming second. Yeah, I think that group went pretty much how people would expect it to go. Uh, Vittoria topping over AZ, who are, of course, in the semifinals of this competition in real life. Bronby finishing third and Sion finishing last. So let's see who is dropping down from the Europa League into the Conference League to play the second place teams in the prelims. Shakhtar Donetsk. Yeah, I could have seen that going either way between them and Fenerbahce, although there was only a point between Napoli and the second and third place teams. Helsinki coming bo uh, com completely bottom in that group. Completely bottom? That was a weird thing to say. They finished dead last. That's what I meant to say. Completely bottom was like a posh way of saying dead last. But anyways, Apwell. 
uh, who, funnily enough, it's you know the, to see them in Atletico Madrid's group. They both played in the Champions League group back in 16-17, and Apwell came third in that Champions League group. They've come third here in this Europa League group, so they'll be dropping down to the Conference League. Munchen Gladbach coming second, uh, Besiktas coming third over, uh, excuse me, underneath Palace and Lens. Palace, of course, are only in the Europa League because they're technically in the rest of the world section because we swapped out Palace when we started this career mode. So for that reason. I don't want Palace to win the Europa League because I really wanted to be in the Europa League this season, but we just missed out. So I really hope Palace don't win it. Uh, oh my God. Okay. There is a huge shock. Wow. RB Leipzig come third, finishing below Hadjuk Split, who will be going to the prelims of the Europa League. And Celtic, fair play to Celtic, who actually beat Leipzig in both games only losing their last game, just like us, and they will be going straight to the last 16 of the Europa League. But that's a very, very interesting team to be dropping down into the Conference League, Leipzig. So ourselves, Sporting and Leipzig would be the three favourites, you feel, for the Conference League group at the moment. And Leipzig and Sporting both now have to be in the prelims, which makes things interesting. Chelsea, though, will be staying in the Europa League, as will Leon. It's Mitchland who dropped down in that uh, group. Inter Milan and PSV go through, as expected. Copenhagen dropping down to third, so that's... Uh, dropping down to the Conference League, I should say, finishing third. That's a pretty decent team to look at as well. Strum Graz finishing below Betis and Club Brugge. And Bucharest will be coming down as well uh, as they finish third underneath Arsenal and Monaco, finishing above Anderlecht. So that's not uh, too shabby from them. I think they'd actually be quite happy with how they did in that group. They were only two points away uh, from qualifying as well, but Arsenal dismantling that group. All right, out of curiosity, let's look at the Champions League, see if there was any shocks there in the group stage. No shocks there. Madrid and Dortmund both qualify, as do Barcelona and Galatasaray. Uh, Bayern and Juve doing their Rangers, in fairness. Gave it a good go, but they will be dropping down to the Europa League. Bilbao topping over Spurs. Roma dropping down to the Europa League. Bit of a shock there. Uh, Liverpool and Lazio going through. Ajax in third. Uh, Milan, Leverkusen going through with Villarreal dropping down to the Europa League. City and Vittoria Plezen. Vittoria Plezen finishing above Benfica and Marseille. That's a bit of a shock. Fair play to them. West Ham couldn't do it in the Champions League. They do end up finishing third. So they'll be dropping down to the Europa League, which look still quite decent for West Ham. And they're only three points away from qualifying, but they finish below Mainz and PSG. Interesting stuff. Right. Back on with the gameplay. We will play one more game before we wrap up this episode. Uh, I think that will be uh, completely fine. Serrano goes up as a centre-back to 72. you love to see that. Because I am thinking of doing something there now. I think I'll do it now before this Brighton game. Uh, Fernandez. I'm tempted to do it now instead of waiting for the summer. No, you know what? We'll wait till the summer. We'll keep Lorenzo Fernandez for the rest of the season because to be honest with you, we just won't have the budget to bring in another centre-back, but he's just not good enough. He's just not good enough. But I think those funds will come in more handy in the summer. So that's what we'll do. But we will play Brighton to round up this episode. They are in 18th, so they're not having a great season themselves. Uh, we will just take Ferreira out because obviously he hasn't been in the best form. I'll start in Buemo and we'll put Afif on the bench. I think that makes sense. Uh... And I think everything else is as you are. Everyone is well rested. Ibn's sharpness has gone up. He's not got the best sharpness in the team. But for outfield players, obviously. But uh, that is good to see. So let's get on with this game. Finish up this episode. Hopefully with another three points. We've have, we have a 100% record in the league at the moment. And let's keep that up with this final game of the episode. And obviously, let's hope that it keeps us top of the league as well. Which it will. So let's hope we can stay top of the league. <laughs> JJ, 28 goals already this season. Technically, the competition record is no longer 32. Of course, Halland broke that in real life, making it 35. Anyways, Brighton at the Amex, who had a very shock uh, defeat yesterday, a big shock defeat, losing 5-1 to Everton, which was fucking insane. Nobody saw that coming. I didn't think Everton were even going to win that game 1-0, never mind 5-1. But hopefully we can get a similar result here. Nice to be playing with the full-strength team as well. I think Ferreira is someone I'll probably let go of in the summer as well. I'll keep these players for the rest of the season, but I think we will have to move them on eventually. 
That's the only problem with Mbwemo and Afif, is I just feel like they both do so much better when they come off the bench. So, Anthony is the, the player I'd love to bring in um, to play on that left-hand side. I think that would be the ideal signing. And I reckon we can get a good price as well for Ferreira. Alex as well there to win the corner. And he'll whip it in as well towards Porig. Unlucky that he couldn't win the header. There's Porig again. Adam Lalana gets it away. Good block there. It's Jose Gaia in Buemo. Chavez. I'm going to have a go. Why not? Oh, I tell you what. It forced a good save from the keeper. Colin is there. JJ's in the middle. Just couldn't win the header. Porig makes sure we keep possession there. Heading it out to Calabria. Now Tarl. JJ. Ooh, unlucky. Well, if Chavez kept running there, he could have intercepted it. And Buemo. Is JJ onside? I think he... No, he's not. He is offside. Oh, speak of the devil! Speak of the devil! Hello, JJ. How are you, pal? We've missed you today. We've missed you. You have missed... You've missed quite a lot. Uh, bloody hell, it's been a very, very interesting episode. We've had some incredible games. And uh, we're hoping that we can round it up here with a win against Brighton. So, hopefully, you can witness that. Didn't realise you were live. Ah, it's no worries, man. I did start a bit later. Obviously, the uh, Champions League semi-finals were... Uh, or one of the Champions League semi-finals was on, of course. As you know, Real Madrid and Man City. I already said Real Madrid and Liverpool there. But uh, I was watching that, so I knew I was going to start a bit later tonight. It'll probably be the same tomorrow, because we are... Uh, oh. oh, oh, lovely. Oh, my God, Dylan Terrell. What the fuck was that? What the fuck was that? But uh, tomorrow, uh, what's it called? AC Milan and Inter Milan are playing, so it'll be a bit of a late stream as well. Uh, I'm not sure about Thursday yet if I'm going to be streaming, because I might have to record the podcast that day. But we'll see. We will see. I will keep you posted. Oh, Tarl is unlucky. Tarl was unlucky. But JJ, on, on the bright side, you have got a lot of uh, a lot of entertaining games to go back and watch if you do want to go back and watch this episode. It's been uh, goals galore, let's just say. And we're in a very interesting position in the league. We are in a very interesting position in the league. Uh, I was watching the Master Box, saw in my feed you were live. I'll have to keep an eye out for you tomorrow. Ah, it's no worries. It's no worries. We started about 25 minutes, I would say, after the uh, City game ended. Of course, I'll go back and watch what I've missed. Oh, JJ, you are... Look, all I can say is, like, you know, every cloud is a silver lining, and there are going to be some very entertaining games uh, for you to watch. Right, I'm sorry. Just give me a second. I started the stream... Oh my god, there we go. When I uh, started the stream, I forgot the mic wasn't with me there for a second, I was absolutely freezing, and now I'm the complete opposite, and I am fucking roasting. God. The joys, huh? The joys. As expected, never a dull moment. JJ, that statement was never truer than this episode. There was some fucking crazy games in this. There were some very crazy games in it. Oh, well done, Chavez. Oh, lucky. He's had a good episode so far, Luis Chavez. Just on his weaker side there. Couldn't quite direct the goal words. Uh, I didn't see the game as I was at work. I saw the result. Yeah, it was a good game between Real Madrid and uh, Man City. It was, it was, it was a decent game. Uh, obviously, as you know, it ended one-one. Uh, two brilliant goals. Vinicius scored an absolute banger in the first half. And look, credit where it's due, Kevin De Bruyne. An absolute beautiful strike uh, from outside the box to equalise. Um, City definitely controlled the game for the most part, but Real Madrid, when they got going, they looked very, very dangerous. Oh, what was Alex doing there? It was, um, it was not a, a boring game. It was very, very good. And it, it will be interesting at the Etihad next week. 
I think City will just go for it. Uh, and I just hope and pray that Real Madrid can bring their A game to the Etihad. But I'm looking forward to tomorrow's game between the two Milans. Uh, that should be fun. Oh, JJ's done well there. He was unlucky. Five minutes now before half time. Oh, unlucky. Unlucky. Uh, but yeah, as I say, like that, that's why we started streaming a bit later. I like to stream around nine o'clock. I, I, that's kind of the, the time I, I like to stream, but uh, it just wasn't possible, unfortunately, today with the uh, Champions League semi final. Um, Thursday, I would hope to be on around nine. It's just I have jujitsu on Thursdays. So uh, I finish, I start at half seven and I finish at half eight. So I'd hope to be home for around nine, half nine. But it could be about 10 o'clock as well by the time we stream on Thursday, if I can stream on Thursday. I still have to sort out a couple of things. Oh, can we score right before half time? Yes, we can. Guess who? It's JJ. 29 league goals for the season, right on the stroke of half time. Brighton, who looked like a relegation team against Everton yesterday, are a relegation team in this career mode. And JJ, he's certainly not a relegation player. Lovely finish. Luis Chavez, who's had a very good episode with the assists. Oh, it's a beautiful back heel. And JJ, who's got a couple with his left foot today, showing he can do it on either side, gets a very important goal. I'm home for tomorrow's game, excited for a Milan semi-final. Yeah, it's, it's going to be very interesting. It was 2005 was the last time these two teams met in the Champions League. Um, and obviously, that was when all the carnage happened, or Dida suffer, uh, suffered, uh, I think it was like second degree or first degree... I think it was first degree burns he actually suffered from a flare hitting him on the shoulder. I'll never forget that. And of course, there's that iconic picture as well that uh, still gets shared on multiple um, football sites to this day. But um, yeah, it will be interesting. It'll be very interesting to see the two teams play together. I can't remember the last time I watched the Milan derby. Jesus, it's been a while. I think I did actually watch one during COVID. I think it was the season before last. It was around my birthday as well, actually. Yeah, that was the last one I watched. But in terms of like a proper, like, you know, with fans um, with fans in attendance Milan Derby it's been a very very long time but a Champions League semi-final doesn't get much better than that so two very exciting games to look forward to one tomorrow and of course one next week that will be very very uh, interesting uh, Premier League game gave some interesting results Chelsea winning I find the most shocking oh sorry now let me just defend here oh it goes off for a goal kick Chelsea winning, I found the most shocking. Uh, the Newcastle losing at home and Everton scoring five. That Everton game was crazy. I didn't see any of the games live. Oh, well, I did see the Arsenal-Newcastle game live. But, um, yeah, Everton, that was a huge result for them. And it probably would be very important for them to stay up. Uh, Chelsea getting their first win under Lampard as well, which fills me with hope because we have to go and play Bournemouth uh, not too, uh, in the not-too-distant future. Obviously, we've got Wolves up, for, uh, up first. But it just goes to show how great the Premier League is that you can get a shock result like that. In Everton, nobody would have expected them to put even one past Brighton. Oh, shit, shit, shit. Oh, but Brighton have just put one past us. Oh, well, goals like that are just so frustrating to fucking... Oh, my God, that's a frustrating goal to concede. Unbelievable. Pora gets absolutely done there. Mamardashvili comes out. It's a lovely chip. And it's 1-1 here. Brighton turning it up here. I watch some derbies every season from certain leagues. They've had some classics over the past few years. Yeah, I've watched the highlights of a couple of the Milan derbies on YouTube. But uh, as I say, it's been a while now since I've watched a full game. Especially, as I say, in front of fans. I used to watch the Classico every year. El Clasico. I know it's not technically a derby, but you know what I mean. Uh, like the, when we were talking about big games from other leagues, I used to love watching El Clasico. But I think when Ronaldo left, and obviously now that both him and Messi are gone, it just lost a bit of its flair, I think. And I know the Clasico was a big game long before Ronaldo and Messi were there, but the glory years, obviously, when the two of them were playing in them, and it was just, it just felt like something was missing, you know. Uh, the, I, I can still remember the first Clasico after Ronaldo left, and it just, it just felt weird. It really, really was a strange, um, a strange game. There's Tarl out to Colin. Back to Tarl. Oh, good ball to JJ. 
Oh, it's a brilliant finish by JJ. That was not an easy chance, but he's done brilliantly well with it. And it's 2-1 here against Brighton. They weren't level for long. 30 league goals for the season already in just 16 games. Turl with a brilliant ball. JJ took that excellently. Oh, excellence of execution. Beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. And we've regained the lead here. The English Van Nistelrooy, he's at it again. Of course he's at it again. 23 minutes to go. And we regain the lead. 2-1. Gaia nearly made a meal of that. But thankfully, we hold on to it. Here's JJ. Polonia. Calabria. Oh, well done. Colin, you're on side. JJ, oh, looking for another hat-trick today. Spoiler for the real JJ. You have gotten at least one hat-trick today. Can you get another one? Oh, unlucky. Good save. I watched the first Classico of the season. I was bored and I'm never bored of that game. Like you said, glory days and the superstars have passed it by. Yeah, it's, it's a shame. And listen, I'm sure that one day the Classico will be, you know, an exciting game again. You know what I mean? I mean, the Milan derby obviously went through a period where it wasn't you know, as exciting as it used to be. But uh, I'm sure that the, the Classico will, will go through that phase again. But yeah, it's just it's just at the moment, it's just not uh, it's just not what it used to be. I and La, La Liga, I think, is just going through that period. Like, listen, Real Madrid are in a Champions League semi final as the defending European champions. So I'm not trying to like shit on La Liga, but like I think La Liga did take a bit of a dip in the last few years. Um, like I'm wearing my Valencia jersey right now. I used to love watching Valencia games, and I remember I watched the Spanish Cup final last season against Real Betis. Porig, oh, good header. But a good save. But Porig wins it again. And Porig scores his second goal of the episode. Oh. He's starting to get into the goal scoring groove. Now the created players. Or technically the real life players that we created in this game. Have all been fantastic today. Porig. He scored earlier. In the episode. I won't spoil it for JJ. I'll wait for him to go back and see it. But he's gotten another one here. And he did really well. To win the second ball there. Fantastic. Absolutely fantastic. 3-1 up. And I think that's three points as well. I think we'll make another couple of changes. Uh, I would bring on Schuler for Chavez. Because we do have Chelsea after this. Uh, we'll give JJ a rest. Uh, just in case. Or will I? No, I'm actually going to keep JJ on for another little bit. Uh, I will bring on Bear for Paulinha because... Actually, no, Kent, Kent has played a couple of games at CDM, and I do want to keep playing Kent. Kent's going to come on to play CDM. Uh, La Liga got its own channel since being off Sky. I haven't watched Bundesliga. I've watched more of. Yeah, I've tuned into that channel a few times, the La Liga channel. And um, I still love La Liga, you know what I mean? It's, it, you know, I mean, the Premier League went through a period of time where the teams, you know, like the, the, games, like the games within the Premier League were still exciting, but in terms of how the teams... And, and the squads were, it wasn't exactly uh, world class, I would say. Um, or at least the best in the world um, at that stage. But, you know, obviously the Premier League now is just, it's the elite of the elite. So, you know, it's just the wheel is always turning. The wheel is always turning. Not, not, not just for leagues, but for specific clubs as well, you know. Like, Bayern Munich have been the most dominant team in Germany for the last fucking 10 years, right? Uh... Well, let me just see if I can get a shot off here with the German. No, I can't. But I'm sure, like, that will change eventually. It mightn't change for a while. But, like, I mean, it happened with Juventus. Juventus were dominating there for a good chunk of time. And they've obviously dropped off. And now Napoli are doing really well. And I know a lot of it's down to, like, the way Bayern Munich are run as a club. And, you know, how just that league is. But uh, that will change. That will change eventually, you know. So, as I said, the wheel is always turning. This time, 28 years ago, Blackburn Rovers were the champions of England. So, think about it like that. <laughs> Leicester were the fucking champions seven years ago. <laughs> and I know that was a that was a freak season. Uh, 
but still like that honestly I, I often think back about that season um the 15 16 season like i went to see united play leicester the day before leicester won the league and like it's just it, it didn't hit me till a year later i remember just sitting down i was on the way to the pub and i remember just sitting down in the car and it just hit me i was like leicester city are the champions of england and they had been for quite a while at this stage but i it just it was just it just hit me in that moment it was absolutely crazy now, obviously, at that stage, they were nowhere near retaining the league, but still, you get the point. Uh, i got to bring on Gallardo. He doesn't get a lot of appearances. We'll bring him on for the last couple of minutes. Uh, did we have two changes we could make there? Or was it just one? Yeah, it was just, it was, uh, just one. Uh, I'm going through that period of uh, Premier League. I'm tired of 17 teams parking uh, its bus when facing City, watching all Prem games in the 90s, even bad teams go for it. And I find Prem games mostly boring. It's all about set up and playing possession rather than go for it. I think we see that with a lot of big games now. Uh, I think I actually mentioned that about, uh, recently about Champions League finals. The last few Champions League finals haven't been great. Um, I think that most of them have just ended 1-0. I think since Liverpool and Man City... Uh, sorry, Liverpool and uh, Real Madrid. That's going to be offside. Perfect. I think since Liverpool and Real Madrid uh, in 2018... So 2019, it was Tottenham and Spurs, which ended 2-0, but, you know, that was a terrible game. And the year after that was Bayern and PSG. That ended 1-0. Man City and Chelsea ended 1-0. Last season, Real Madrid and Liverpool was 1-0. Like, you know, you, you just don't see... The last few Champions League finals haven't been great, let's just say. Um, and it's because teams, you know, it is the way they set up. But, like, it's just the modern game, I think, you know what I mean? It's just the modern game, but... Uh, oh, hang on. Can we get a fourth here? For Hashi. Oh, he can't. Can Tarl? Oh, Tarl can, though. Lovely finish. 4-1. So many goals in this episode. We've put the sword to Brighton. They did grab an equaliser, but... Uh, we have shut up shop since then. For Hashi couldn't get there, but Tarl, it was a tough finish. Really was. And... Uh, that was a very, very good goal. Uh, all these big clubs with fancy styles, boring finals. That's why I think I'd like to see AC Milan in the final, because or, or even if Inter Milan get there, you know, because like, both of them are still in a top four race in Serie A. And I just feel like if one of those teams, well, obviously we know one of those teams will be in the final, but I just feel like they'll go for it a bit more. You know, I just feel like because they're not like after dominating the league or they're not exactly in a title race, I just feel like they will... They, they won't play it as safe as a, a Man City or a Real Madrid will. But I feel, like, I feel like Real Madrid and AC Milan would be in the final. But I think Real Madrid and AC Milan would be a phenomenal final. Really would be. But we do get a 4-1 win here against Brighton. Very, very uh, happy with that. That's a very good result to go in uh, to the next game, which is against Chelsea. Uh, Leicester hardly any possession had and had no fear. Look at what happened. Old school 4-4-2. I know, it was brilliant. It was brilliant. And listen, we all knew at the time, right? We all knew at the time that Leicester winning the league was a one-off. Like, the following season, they were never going to get anywhere near, um, you know, what they did the year before. But with that said, right, I, I got a bit of shit, of this, um, a bit of shit for this at the time because I said that as well as Leicester did, you have to remember, United had a very, very um, weak squad when it came to squad depth that season. Chelsea completely fell off after all the drama with Jose Mourinho. Liverpool, uh, Brendan Rodgers had just left and Klopp was coming in, so they were still kind of trying to find their identity under Klopp. Man City, this was the year before Pep came in, so they still had... They were still in a bit of a transitional time. Uh, Spurs, you know, under Pochettino were good, but not, not really just to let it stick they beat Leicester twice that season but for whatever reason they just couldn't take over so Leicester took advantage of the bigger teams not performing but you know like I'm not taking away from them but we all knew the following season staying in the Premier League was going to be a good thing for them but I mean to be fair the following season they you know they, they finished in the bottom half of the table but they got to the Champions League quarter final and they got knocked out to Atletico Madrid you know so like no shame in that uh, Spurs were the only real challengers they had promised before falling. It's so funny that people say about Tottenham because Tottenham were challenging Leicester for the title race or in the title race, I should say, but they still managed to come third. And then 
we got the uh, the famous phrase, Tottenham managed to come third in a two-horse race. It's crazy. It's crazy. But right, uh, let's wrap up this episode with uh, a few uh, little admin things here. So, we are top of the league. Spoiler, we're top of the league. Had to give it away. Oh, this is a lovely sight, lads. 16 games in, six points clear of Aston Villa, who still haven't lost a game, but they have drawn seven out of their 16 games. Winning nine, scoring 28, only conceding 13. So defensively, they are doing really, really well. We are top. It's crazy. After losing that game 5-2 to Villa at the start of the season, I was worried. But as you can see, like it's crazy. They've conceded 13, and we've conceded the opposite with the same numbers, but the opposite way. We've conceded 31. Still need to get better defensively. It's, we're still conceding far too many goals, but we're scoring a lot as well. A 25-goal difference. City in third. They're still in there. Chelsea as well, who we do play in the next episode. West Ham, who are in fifth, are still... Yeah, they're a bit off, but you know they're still someone who I'll be keeping an eye out for because they did beat us this season. United, unfortunately, not doing too well. Who's in the relegation zone? Jesus, Liverpool. I love to see that. Liverpool having a torrid time. Brighton, Stoke and Norwich... Not too much of a surprise there. Uh, but let's have a look at the uh, stats. So Mamardashvili has gone up to 82 rated, which is good. We did bring on Alonso in that Conference League game, which I'm sure you'll go back to watch, JJ. But uh, we did sim it, and he had a very good start and then didn't do great afterwards. That's all I'm really willing to say about that. But uh, Mamardashvili is still the only player to play every game, which is great, and he's going up in his overall, which is good to see. But uh, JJ... This is ridiculous, man, but in the best way possible. 85 rated, plus three growth this season. 40 goals in 22 appearances. 30 in the league, one in the league cup, nine in the conference league, nine assists on top of that as well. It is insane. Dylan Terrell, I'm very happy with my own numbers. 12 goals in 22 appearances, nine in the league, three in the conference league, 11 assists on top of that. Furuhashi still showing he is a very solid backup as well. Two, uh, two and two in the, uh, what's it called? The Carabao Cup, the League Cup. Two and eight in the league. Five and five in the Conference League. That's the competition where he's shining the most. And he's got a couple of assists on top of that as well. Alex, seven goals and 15 assists. You love to see that. Got two very big goals in this episode today. Embuemo is doing well off uh, the bench uh, as well, which is really good. Porig starting to come up there too. And Chavez, only the two goals scored, but he got them against United and Arsenal. So... Make of that what you will. But 13 assists. He is making up for it. He's not scoring a lot, but he's setting them up like there's no tomorrow, which is great to see. He's only made three Conference League appearances. I didn't realize that. But anyways, whatever, whatever. That is brilliant. Of course, Alex leading the assists with Chavez and Terrell doing well. JJ one away from hitting 10 assists. That is brilliant. And Embuemo with five. Not too shabby. Ferreira. Yeah, the less said about him, the better. Okay, that, that That's a bit harsh. He, he's done all right, but he's just... You know, we, we will I want to move on from him eventually. Right, so thank you, JJ. I uh, really appreciate you tuning in, pal. Uh, we missed you a good bit uh, for the good bit of the episode that you weren't here for. I can't speak English at the moment, but it is always a pleasure to speak to you, and I look forward to speaking to you tomorrow. It'll be roughly on around the same time after the uh, Milan Derby, but uh, I do look forward to it. And to anyone else who tuned in, I appreciate it as well. Uh, it's been a brilliant episode uh, with a lot of very fun games. And I'm sure tomorrow will be no different. Until then, have a good one.